guys, how's it going? So I'm super excited for today's video. We're in our back garden getting ready to plant a flower bed full of gorgeous stuff. So I have it all kind of laid out here and I thought you guys might find this interesting because this isn't a particularly wide flower bed and it's also kind of long and I've seen a few comments from you wondering how to plant in something like this, like a flower bed shaped like this in a way that the plants don't look like they're in a straight line so that they still look like they're in groups or drifts and that's what I'm going to do right here. So I kind of want to talk about all of the plants that I have here and you know it kind of changes a little bit as we start putting things in the ground um, so we might shift things here or there um, but I think this is the basic layout you can see I've got some gorgeous hydrangeas here just absolutely beautiful these are called invincible mini mauvettes they grow about two and a half to three feet tall and wide you can see like these are a newer bloom and these are a little bit more aged and they are in cans so they have brown just a little bit because it is pretty hot right now um, but I'm excited to see what they do once they're in the ground the cool thing about these two is they're a type of smooth hydrangea or hydrangea arborescence so they bloom on new wood which means if we have a really hard winter um, or something like that they'll still bloom no matter what uh, and I can prune them too so I can kind of prune them to keep them down into a nice they stay small anyway, um, but I can kind of control their shape a little bit and not worry about when I'm pruning them. Um, down below, I've got some yellow My Darling Echinaceas, um, and these are new next year. They grow about 18 to 24 inches tall. And also another thing, as we go, most of these I can use for cut arrangements, which is so awesome to have things that look beautiful in your landscape, but you can still use them for another purpose as well. Um, so these Echinaceas, not only do I love their soft kind of buttery yellow, that I think goes really well with the mini mauvettes, but they'll also be great cut flowers and great midsummer through the end of fall color back here. Um, as we go, you can see here I've got a Winecraft black smoke bush. Um, and you know, we've talked about this one a few times. I love, look at the color. Look at that. This is like, um, I don't know, we're majoring on pink here. Um, but I love the fact that this one stays smaller. This one only grows about four to six feet tall and wide. So I'm gonna actually tuck it right up by this fence because I kind of want it to grow out into our gravel area here. I really like that look when things kind of, you know, lean on the rails and it just looks a little bit more free. Um, then I've got a little drift of Wizard of Oz Veronica which are kind of struggling in their cans a little bit. I'm really excited actually to get these things in the ground because I think they'll be a lot happier. Now the Wizard of Oz grows, I think about 14 to 16 inches. So it'll actually be a little bit shorter than the Echinacea. So I'm gonna have the drift of Echinacea start there and kind of go back behind the first couple of these Veronica. And that way we have a very easy look to it. It doesn't look like just globs of plants, you know, like you plant five things together and then move and plant the next five. They kind of undulate and there's waves of them. I really like how that looks in gardens. So that will be a little shorter. It'll also complement the plants um, around it. All of these colors look really good together. This is kind of the jewel of this area and it looks so good right now. It's called the Summerific Candy Crush Hibiscus. And there's something about that pink that really like draws me in. I don't know if it's like the creaminess or it's kind of like iridescent almost, but this one grows about four by four. Hi, Benjamin, what are you doing? <laughs> are you excited? Mm. You can have that. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty, huh? Okay, um, and then right back here, because you'll kind of see in order to get your plants to where they don't look like they're in a straight line, you can say I'm kind of doing a zigzag pattern almost here. So we've got the two hydrangeas, the Winecraft Black, the uh, Summer Fit Candy Crush, and then back here, I need to go grab my trellis, but I've got a Sweet Summer Love Clematis. So this one has kind of pinkish, uh, red-ish, purple blooms um, and they usually bloom midsummer through fall now they do act a little differently when they're in their cans so once this is established in the ground i'm expecting next year for it to be really really pretty and these are huge hydrangeas this one grows i think let me double check i'm throwing lots of stats at you so i want to make sure i'm right here 10 to 15 feet tall six to 10 feet wide like that's an insane size of clematis in fact we just got through planting one of these in my sister-in-law's garden and i think it's going to be gorgeous there too I think it's gonna do great on this fence section. And you can see that right now we're in the shade. This spot actually gets sun from morning until mid afternoon. So it'll get a block enough sun for all of our sun lovers to be happy, but it's also 
uh, protected from the harsh, harsh late afternoon sun. So it'll keep our hydrangeas happy, our clematis happy. So I think we'll have a good blend of uh, plants. And the next one I have right here is a hookera called cherry truffles. I've had this one out in my greenhouse. And I wanted to show you guys what happens here in Eastern Oregon, if we water from overhead. We have such hard water here that it leaves white deposits on everything. Um, so this whole flower bed though is um, irrigated by drip. So once I cut that back, it'll flush back with beautiful, just deep kind of red foliage uh, and it'll be really pretty. These grow 10 inches tall by about 30 inches wide. So it's a good size perennial. If you have an area you need to fill, that's a good type to do that get that big. So I can fit maybe a couple in here. Um, I forgot to grab the second one. So I'll go grab that here in a minute. And the last few plants over here, we've got some serendipity allium, which I believe is new next year. I left the seed heads just so you guys could see what it looked like sort of when it's in bloom. They have beautiful, you know, allium, purple globe blooms earlier on in the summer. So this will be our earlier color in this bed. So will the Veronica. So a couple of our perennials in here will provide early color and then the rest of this stuff will come in a little bit later and that way we have some um, bloom, what is it, succession. Um, we don't want to just plant everything that blooms only at one time of year. Um, but these are just wonderful with that grassy texture which I don't have in any of the other plants in here. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I have them in a couple other areas of in my garden. And then this one right here, this is called a soft serve gold false cypress. It looks an awful lot like an arborvita, but the way you can tell the easiest way is if you crush a little foliage in your fingers. Arborvitas have a really, like, really nice fruity smell to them, and these have more of a pungent smell. Like it's very definite if you got the two of them side by side and smell them. So you might do that next time you're around an arborvita uh, and a cypress. But this one grows about six to 10 feet tall and wide. So I realize eventually we're gonna have to move some plants out, um, but it's not an enormously fast grower, um, especially here. Uh, evergreens seem to take a little bit longer. Um, our arborvitae, North Pole arborvitaes are doing better than I expected. They are just growing like crazy. So we'll see what this one does, which might mean I eventually may have to move a couple of plants. But like I said, with the Winecraft Black, I'm gonna back this one up toward the fence so it can kind of go out. And then I thought that the foliage of this one, the color would look amazing with this black lace elderberry right here, which is a monster. I cut this shrub down to about hip height every single year. And this is how big it grows every single year. They're an amazing plant. And the last plant here is called a Decadence Dark Chocolate Baptisia. And this one I love just even the foliage of because it almost has a eucalyptus look to it. it has that blue green uh, leaf color, which I think looks amazing next to the black lace and this cypress right here. Like these three just with no blooms, it looks amazing. Um, but this one does have blooms late spring through early summer. So it'll actually be an earlier bloomer than anything else in this flower bed, uh, in this part of the flower bed anyway. Um, so we'll have a nice succession of color, grows about three by three. So I'm gonna tuck it in kind of right in here. So it can just be a nice little soft mound in here. Um, so I'm just really excited. The blooms, I don't know if I said the blooms are kind of like a dark, almost blackish, purple cobalt. I don't even, they're just gorgeous. And I have Baptisias in other parts of my garden. They do really well here. So now that we've talked about all of the plants, I just really hope it's helpful for you guys to see everything kind of laid out before it's gone in the ground. And I know that, you know, a lot of us don't plant all of these things all at one time. Like maybe you do shrubs one year and you come in and do some perennials the next year. But I really just for the sake of explanation and showing you guys, um, what kind of the end goal can be. I really wanted to do this all in one fell swoop. And I think it's just gonna be beautiful, excited to see what it does throughout the years. So at this point, we're actually gonna take a break so we can take Benjamin down to our county fair. Um, and we really just wanted to get out here real quick and go through all of these plants when they were all in the shade. It makes it so much easier to see detail and all that sort of thing. So we'll come back tomorrow morning and start all of the whole planting process. So I will be in a different set of clothes at that point and that's why. So we'll see you tomorrow. All right guys, 
they're all planted and I really love how they all look together. You might notice though that some of the shrubs are in different spots. I did plant everything exactly how I showed you the layout. And then, you know, of course it's really hot outside so I got to be a huge mess during this project. So I went inside to clean up. And while I was doing that, I was thinking, you know what? I need to move some of those shrubs so that each individual variety has the ability to shine. Um, so what I did, I initially had this Winecraft Black, you know, up against the fence, and I thought, you know, it needs its own spot to grow and its own, like, it doesn't need anything around it that's going to get really big. So the Echinaceas and the Little Veronica are perfect. And then I put the Invincible Mini Mauvettes all together so they can kind of create this mass of beautiful color. And then we've got, of course, the um, soft serve gold fall cypress is in the same spot. I did move the clematis down so that it was on a post and then we can train it up and kind of over. I decided to do that because the other post right here, I didn't want the clematis trying to climb up the hydrangeas and choke those out. Um, so I think that'll be a good spot for it. So I'll add a little trellis here to help it grow. I just didn't have quite the right size for this area. I thought I did. Um, we did pop the baptisia out. It's now in a, a flower bed right to my right. Um, and we put the hibiscus in here and that way this one can really, you know, show off really against this black lace elderberry. And then with the perennials, I did the drift thing, you know, the echinaceas kind of tuck in behind the veronicas. And you will notice that I did put some perennials back um, behind the shrubs because we do see this flower bed from both sides. I wanted some interest on both. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. I know that a lot of you guys have these kind of narrow flower beds that are straight and you wonder how do I make it look like it's not everything's not straight you know what I mean so this is how I do it I just kind of zigzag my plantings instead of doing um, big groups like this is a big group of hydrangeas but I've got perennials kind of going in and amongst them so it kind of breaks it up a little bit and then there's a lot of varying colors and textures and I think that is so important in any flower bed you've got to have different foliage colors different bloom colors different bloom times and that way you'll have a very interesting flower bed no matter what shape the flower bed is. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'm very excited to give you updates later. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.